can hear myself. Can you can you hear me? So my name is Mats Persson. I work at IBM uh, here in Malmö. Uh, and I have Oscar with me, also working at IBM. Uh, so we're here to talk about AI at IBM. So let's say if we represent that, I would be artificial and you would be intelligent, I think. Uh, and we will talk about two things. Uh, we'll talk about something called Enlighten Me, which is a research project we have been conducting together with SLU in our lab. And I will also talk a little bit about something called IBM Agro Decision Platform, that is a product that uh, we have on this uh, particular topic as well. So, Enlighten Me. Uh, Enlighten Me is uh, an idea that we had in a competition at IBM. So, a couple of years ago, we had something called a Cognitive Bean. That was a global innovation uh, competition internally at IBM. So, we were supposed to do some kind of cognitive idea, business case, and then build prototypes. It's more like a global hackathon. And we formed teams all over the world, and we uh, built prototypes, and, and we competed with these things as well. So in total, we actually had 8,361 different ideas created globally. Uh, of these, almost 4,000 made it all the way to the build. And then, at the end, uh, we competed, so everyone got virtual money and we could bet on each other's stuff as well. And with the Enlightening project that we worked on, we actually won in the audits here. So what is Enlightening? So we wanted, to do, uh, we wanted to do a local project that has something to do with the region here as well. We were competing with a couple of guys in Stockholm as well, so it was focused on Malmö and the area, and we said, agriculture, really cool, we could do something. We also thought there was a pot of gold at the end, so we could get some money, and, and a couple of us wanted to buy a big fat drone that we could use on our spare time as well, so that was driving us also. also. And uh, so we said, drones, farming, that represents Malmö, uh, we need to get some help. So we thought about SLE. We might be able to do something together with them. And we only had a month of doing this on the side of our normal work as well. So, I jumped in the car and I crashed your cafeteria and started to look at people. Yep, we met. And I was introduced to Ireland and Erik uh, because they had been looking at drones and how to use drones in, in potato growing to find diseases. So what we found out, they have all been flying and taking pictures and so on as well. And they, they tried to look at them and see if they could detect the disease from the drone pictures. And we said, why do you look at the pictures? That's time consuming. You don't gain anything from this. You need to have some kind of help of doing this. And that's how the idea of enlightening actually started. Uh, so if you look at the disease we're looking at, we're looking at something called late blight. So it attacks the potatoes. It comes every year on certain uh, temperatures when certain uh, humidity is found uh, in the field. And it's a very aggressive uh, disease as well. So from the contamination until the potatoes is totally wasted, it's, we talk about a couple of days only. So farmers today, they spray just in case, up to 10 times for every growing season. So if you look for Sweden, for example, almost half of the pesticides, or actually fungicides used in all farming, is used for potatoes. And at the same time, potatoes only stands about 8%. 0.8% of the grown area. So you can imagine the amount of pesticides used for potatoes only. So we said this is a really good, interesting business case that we can, we can take a look at, we can reduce it, we can support the farmers who are growing or, organically, uh, and we can, we can probably reduce the amount of pesticides used if we spray when it's needed instead of just in case. So the whole idea was to see if we were able to train our AI called Watson with image recognition, with the pictures we got from SLU as well. And uh, we did a training, and you will go into the details later on, on how this works, uh, on what's on, and we could, we could train the AI to detect these. And what happened was that we were quite successful in doing this, uh, and uh, when the cognitive build stopped after a month and we won the competition, we were quite happy and we were not supposed to do anymore. And then we were approached again by SLU because they wanted to and we got the research grant from, from Vinova to carry on with this project. So we're now into our third year. We still have it slightly as a whole project. 
and driving it, we're using students from, from Lund's University and we're using students from Malmö Yrkeshögskola that help us build this as, as uh, work in school. And uh, we are now basically at the end of the project in November. And uh, what we wanted to see was if we could use the AI to detect it as early so you don't have to spray until you get infected. And we were supposed to know that in detail if it's possible. I think it's possible, but unfortunately with the weather conditions we have this summer, there were no infections, so we didn't get any pictures. This week. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to continue for another year uh, to see if we can use, because we are now using not the traditional RGB cameras, we're using uh, single spectral cameras to, to get better pictures out of it as well. Right. Yep. So how do we do this? Oh, we can skip this one. This one too? <coughs> yep. Thank you for that handover. So I'm going to go into more of the details without getting lost in the technicalities, but you're more than welcome to grab on to us in the break and ask more about the explanation behind these so called AI apps and so on. But I'm going to brush over it in a more, uh, more of an overview. So what we actually did with this app is that we thought about the main way of gathering information, in this case, photos of the potato plants was through aerial photos. I mean, using a drone or a UAV or a small airplane or something like that. That is what we kind of uh, built this app around, the way we think. But that is not really a necessity, but in our case, that's what we're going to do. So what happens when we've gathered all the information, we are feeding this into an instance on the IBM Cloud called Watson Image Recognition, and we have trained this instance in order to detect if a plant is healthy or unhealthy. I'm going to go a little bit more into the details of that later on, but this is the first step where we need something that is what we call cognitive, or basically AI. I'm going to brush over that as well. What happens then? Well, all these results, if plants are healthy or unhealthy, are then fed into our prediction model, right now uh, built in Python, actually. And we combine this with real-time weather. So we have millions of data points from the weather company that we add to this because the disease spreads very heavily um, dependent on, on humidity and wind direction and so on and so forth. So this is where I would say there is some magic happening. Uh, we have the, uh, the data, we have the prediction models, and we have the weather. Kind of hard to combine, but that's where we thought we would put most of it. The last step is to actually display this back to the farm. Okay. I mean, having the data and doing analytics doesn't matter unless you can consume it in an easy to consume way. Um, we thought that a UI that is easy to use and understand is the most important thing here. You will have your overview on weather details, that you will get your alerts on when to act, when there's an outbreak imminent. And this is where I believe uh, we can really change change the market on this. But I know I, I just touched upon the IBM Watson brand and image recognition, so I'm going to just take a, step, take a step back here, because IBM Watson is, for those who don't know, the kind of supercomputer that IBM built that won Jeopardy in, in the US some 10, 15 years ago, and mm -hmm. since that it has evolved, and this is now a service that we have in the cloud. So you can actually go to IBM Cloud and, and build your own apps using all of our AI or cognitive apps, and you, we have a lot of hosting as well, so this is kind of the cloud framework that we're working with. But this is an example of the uh, image recognition, the first prototype we built. We upload a lot of photos of healthy plants. This is taken from 15 meters above, and images that was positive for late plants. And it's kind of easy to see, yeah, healthy <coughs> and unhealthy. And of course, what's on there is, and we used it in our first prototypes. But we needed more granularity, so we needed to be able to take photos on like one and a half meters. And what someone would be happy to be able to tell if this plant is healthy or not. So that's where we realized that there's a sort of a crowdfunded network within IBM that has done this training to Watson. So in the basic instance of uh, Watson image recognition, you can now uh, build your own app and try to detect late light. And it's actually globally available. But of course, I mean, if you have a, a better model, you can train your own instance and put it up on the cloud quite easily. 
So, but yes, you can train it. But there are some other things you can do with this. I mean, I uploaded up this picture to our instance, and Watson can tell that this is a rocket engine, or more precisely, a jet engine, for example. So imagine the things that you can start doing with this. What? Well, basically, things that humans are very good at. I mean, we can classify things quite easily. And this has been a problem before, but <laughs> I really started this journey by building apps that understood human speech and human text. And even up to this day, understanding sarcasm in written text is really, really hard for computers. But this is where this artificial intelligence, the cognitive era, really can do something for us. And I, I use the word cognitive, and that's, well, yeah, that's how we like to brand it. Because AI is, um, well, it's, um, it's a dangerous word to throw around, I would say. The cognitive could be seen as augmented intelligence instead of artificial intelligence. You add upon a layer of human understanding for computers, and you add upon a layer for humans of computational understanding. So, meaning that there's a, a cross path for where humans can help computers and what computers can help humans. But I'm going to try to describe this with this graph. So, from top to bottom, you have level of complexity within cognitive apps, or AI, if you call it that. And from left to right, we have a sort of a timeline from where you have basic uh, problems to left until you get to the point where you can decide. You have some choices where you can decide upon. And then you get to act. So, in the most simplest of things, you get your cognitive apps to answer questions for you, or maybe solve some problems. Basically, image recognition is this plant healthy or unhealthy? That's a basic well, answering of a question. But then after that, you will still need to put in your input, realizing, okay, it's healthy over here, should I spray over here as well? Or so on and so forth. Until you come to the moment where you can decide upon what to do, and then you can act. So, if we start to predict outcomes, we get a little bit further down the road, but we still need to put in some input, we still need to decide ourselves, and then we can act. So the bottom half here is what we call the prescription of next best actions. And this is where I think this starts to get more complex and more interesting in that sense, because decision support is what brings you to that, you have two choices. You do whatever you like, but then you have to act. And this is where a system of apps come into place. It's, it's not only just one instance on IBM Cloud that can do this for you, it's a whole ecosystem of detailed information, gathering of data, and then doing analytics on it. They're gonna bring it here. Decision automation brings you all the way into that, you can alert, you need to act right now. And the system has already figured out and reasoned on what different decisions there were and taken the decision on that. This can also, of course, I mean, trigger your drone to fly out and take pictures and then go back, maybe spray automatically. I mean, this is the way we're thinking about this. So, and in our app, this decision automation gives the farmer an alert that you need to do this and you need to spray in an optimized way that is like that. So, wrapping this back up again is that the cognitive analytics that we used for this app was that we heavily relied on real-time data and the, uh, was sort of gluing that together. And it was especially important to get the prediction model and the millions of data points from the weather really play together. That's the first step. We have been using UAVs, that is a three-letter acronym for drones, um, as a sort of um, automating this, making it scalable. But of course, it was really important for the farmers to be able to do quick checkups, like intermittently just go out and have a look, and that was also implemented. But lastly, what I think is interesting as well is that we built this around a community. So imagine you have 50 farmers in Skåne connected to this app. And an outbreak happens over here. The wind direction points to you, and the humidity is really rather high. Well, you should get an alert without having your neighbor's data, because that might be a competitor as well. But we built this around the idea that having a community behind the scene really helps everyone in this scenario. You have a win-win, and you will have less waste and less use of pesticides in general. So this is just a close-up of the app as it is right now. You have your weather details up top. Uh, you can see your different fields, um, some other information if you point and click in the map. Down though, 
you have your alerts that kind of pop up when something is about to happen, you need to take action. And in the middle, it's just a leaf, but right here you can press analyze, take a photo with your iPad out in the field. And it will send the photo up to, to Watson, analyze it, run through the prediction, and come back to you and say, yeah, this is an infected plant. Either rip it out, or you need to know how to spray. So that is a quick run through of the app that we built and the technologies behind it. But I would like to hand over to Max to maybe take the route down to more of the really big data. Cool, thank you. Uh, I would like to spend a couple of minutes on something called Watson Decision Platform for Agriculture. Uh, this is a platform that is about to be released. Uh, some parts is available already. And one of the issues for, for many farmers is that uh, we looked at CropSat, for example, earlier. You can see how much nitrogen you have in, in, your, in your soil. That's one layer of information you need in order to take decisions on, on how to, how to uh, work on your farm. Um, there are many, many layers. Everything from soil temperature, you have weather, you have all of these things. But they are all spread out in different locations. Uh, you have them in different databases. You have different providers of all of this information. And the strength of this information is if you put everything on top. So you can see one field, and you can, you can actually see, in this field, what is the moisture? Uh, how is the weather going to be in one week, for example? When you have all this into one place, then it starts to get interesting. You can do a very different analysis of, of this information than you can today. And this is a little bit what the Watson Decision Platform is. Uh, we have a pilot, actually, wine as well, uh, in, in California, where we are using this app to control how they water the wines uh, in the field. So, in California... Yep. So when you said it's going to be released, uh, very soon, you say it was when? Some parts are available, but not all of it yet. So it, it's a platform where you find the data. So some, some functionality is still to be built as well, and it's going to be released in different uh, cycles. Uh, so for EJ Gallo, we made a, a test. So in California, there is not uh, there is a shortage of water. So when they water the plants uh, for the wine, they now get a restriction from the government how much water they can use. That means that in the fields they have, they can't grow on all the uh, all the fields anymore because they're not allowed to consume uh, water in the same way as they have done in the past. So. With a decision platform, with sensors in the fields as well, uh, we built our irrigation system uh, that waters just when it's needed and nothing else. And that meant that the company could go actually go back and grow on, on all of that area and consume far less water as well. And that was not possible uh, for them earlier without having this information collected in one place as well. And what we tried to do is that the decision that is made today, that is normally done on instinct and experience from the farmers as well. So when you have all of this data, you can start using machine learning and AI to see what has been done in the past on the farms and, and build models that can actually predict what happens. So with this you can do yield estimation in a completely new way. And what we do here is that in these data you can actually add your own data as well. So if you have tractors, sprayers, combiners and all these things. We have already pockets in these layers where you can feed this data into as well. So if you have your own sensors in the field for humidity, for example, you can replace our layer with a more exact uh, one as well. Um, we gather public and private data into these fields. And this database is global, so it's not only in North America or South America or, or, or in Europe. This data is available for all of the globe uh, at this point of time as well. Uh, you can put in drone pictures here as well. So if you want to feed your own pictures in here uh, for analysis, that's fine as well. Otherwise, we get the imagery from satellites as well. And uh, you can put your own data in here as well. So it's built on a platform called Paris. So we start off with a normal map. You put all the different layers on uh, that you need in your model. There are different models for different crops uh, available from, from the beginning. Uh, disease detection, for example, there is about 15 diseases that is now covered by the solution as well, where you can get a prediction for these. And this is just a sample of a 10 acre yield map. So based on the information in a certain field, you can actually predict what yield you will get on different areas with this information. And that's basically what I would like to show on the agro decision.
I think we're early as well, because this was what we were supposed to do. I am very impressed with this, yeah? to say, both with the IBM and also keeping track of time. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. is not sold to specific farmers or anything like that. This is a solution that is available for, let's say, a company like Lantmännen or someone to, to actually tap into and then they provide the information and conclusions to their farmers at the end. So it's not a farmer end application. It's a platform for, for gaining information for other companies. So it's a middle layer. And it, it's, based, it's based, actually, the price model is how much information per area that you use. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's um, not a fixed price model. And the more you use the data, the more you pay for it. Sorry, and to respond to this, how do you see uh, the interaction with the farm management systems the farmers may use already, which already combine some data from different sources? <coughs> Is it something that would work with uh, your platform? Or? Yes. Because the layers, you can put your own data in here as well. They are available by APIs to feed the information in here. Yeah. Then, of course, I mean, uh, it's an early stage, the product. Uh, so we have certain layers like greenness and, and moisture, weather. Uh, and we, we will add more layers to it as well as we go. Okay, any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.